Well, hey, One Church, it's Luther, and I'm uh, going to do our devotion for today for One Church, and just wanted to talk about this new normal that we're all living in, this less contact with human beings that we're not really accustomed to. Uh, I am a social extrovert, and in our family, we run that spectrum from me being social extrovert all the way out to my wife, who is a shy introvert, and I've got kids who fall kind of everywhere in between, and so we're trying to figure out how this works for us. I would be on the go every day. And and so that's gonna be the hard part for me. I'm the weirdo that when I go to Walmart or Kroger, I don't go through self-checkout because I wanna go meet the person at the cash register. I wanna have a conversation. Uh, I wanna see if there is some way that I can brighten their day. Um, and so that's something I really work on and it's just, it feeds me, it's who I am. And so I'm unpacking this and working through it. And, and as that person, this isolation can be kind of good for me I'm always going to fight slowing down and giving God room to speak. That is a battle that I have lived with for years, something I have to be very intentional about. And this season of life is probably going to be one where I do better at that because there's less distractions. And so if you're like me, I want to encourage you, especially in this season, uh, now more than ever, we probably need to hear God's voice. We need to hear what God says about us and to us. And so I want to encourage you to take some time and not necessarily fill all of this isolation time with Netflix and Hulu and video games and whatever else it is that you would distract your mind with. Uh, take some time. Uh, I'm out here on uh, our back porch sitting in nature this morning. And, you know, you read God's word. And, and for me, I love worship. Worship kind of takes the focus off of me and puts it back on God and allows me then to just kind of stop and get still and get quiet and, and give God an opportunity to speak in my life where he doesn't have to scream over all the, the all the distractions. And so I would encourage you, if you're someone like me who struggles to slow down, who struggles to give God room to speak, um, in this season of life slowing down, to take advantage of that and maybe build some muscle memory on what it looks like to just rest in God, to slow down, to realize that he's still in control and give him an opportunity to speak. And uh, you got to really work that in your brain. It's something I have to really focus on. And like I said, for me, that looks like spending some time in God's word, uh, wanting to, I mean, God has spoken to me. He's written what he wants me to know in his word. Uh, I love to include some worship in that just because that's part of who I am. Knowing that I can sing right into the throne room of heaven really takes that focus off of me. Um, and then just getting still and fighting with my brain not to run crazy. For some of us, I know isolation can kind of do the opposite thing. It's not that we don't hear God's voice. It's what well, it is, but we hear all the other voices and those voices just aren't healthy. Um, for a lot of us right now, we're struggling with things like anxiety and fear and, and our uh, what we think of ourselves is we're struggling with all those things. And, and it's all these other voices. It's uh, as we've been doing a social media series at church, it's it's comparison. You know, are you living in envy of what someone else's life looks like on Instagram or Facebook and thinking about the reality of your life? And, um, you know, no one's life is ever as good as it looks like on social media. Um, and so you may have to work on that in a different way. And what I would encourage us to do is that anytime that those voices start to feel like they have a, a place in our head, that they're starting to help us identify with who we are, is we need to be reminded of what God says about us. Um, you are not too broken. You are not too damaged. You are not beyond God's love. Jesus died for you. You were made with a purpose on purpose. And so those are the things we need to remember about ourselves. Anytime we hear a voice that says anything that's the opposite of that, we need to tell that voice, you know, not today, Satan. You just move on uh, because I know what God says about me. And so I, I want to go back to a passage in scripture that seems a little weird, but I think it's perfect for this season of our life right now. In Luke chapter 2, we read the story of Jesus being born. And these mangers are hanging out at night, watching their sheep, doing their thing. And all of a sudden, an angel shows up. And they're scared. And, and the angel says something really weird if we look at it in the context of what was going on. The angel says, I bring you good news of great joy. Good news being Jesus, the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus being born. But the great joy part seems weird to me. Because there was no joy in the, the way that we look at joy. Joy for us is usually what's going on around us, you know, our job, the things we have, the people in our lives. 
But what we learn here is that joy is not our happenings. That's happiness. Joy is what God places inside us uh, when we start a relationship with Jesus. And it's this thing that doesn't isn't reliant upon what's going on around us. And see, what was going on in the manger's life in, in, in Bethlehem at that time was they were living under Roman occupation. They were being so heavily taxed that everybody was poor. Every baby boy um, that was under two years old was about to be murdered as they were trying to find and kill Jesus. And so there was nothing that we would call joyful. And yet when Jesus showed up, we were given the gift of joy. And so as you're maybe struggling with anxiety today or trying to figure out what this new normal looks like, I want you to know that that same joy that the angel promised 2000 years ago to some shepherds who were living in a really hard, chaotic time is the same gift of joy that God offers to you and me today who are living in a really chaotic, hard time, something we've never experienced before, we too can accept the joy that God offers us. Um, and that's something that the Holy Spirit gave to you and to me and to all of us when we started a relationship with him. Uh, and it simply requires us to take the focus off us, worship going up, um, and, and believing those things that God says to us and about us. And so as you're figuring out your new normal, my prayer for you and for me and for all of us is that we would accept that joy today uh, and live in that. Hope you guys have a great day.